Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back to Solid Gold. People who aren't involved in the fish keeping hobby are usually pretty shocked to find out that you can indeed ship fish through the mail. But the reality is that whether you're buying fish from an individual breeder or someone that brings them in from overseas or your local pet store that you can drive to and drive your fish home, chances are that fish was shipped maybe even multiple times before it finally arrived in your aquarium. Many aquarium fish actually come from overseas. That's where they're either captured from the wild or bred in captivity and then sent over to the United States. So they have to first be shipped from overseas and usually a trans shipper does that. They'll be shipped from overseas and arrive at the trans shipper who then either holds them for a while or just repackages them and sends them out to the individual pet stores that have ordered from them. The chances are that if you're buying from a smaller business, the fish were shipped fewer times. For example, if you're buying fish from someone like me who is like a small time fish breeder, my fish haven't been shipped to me and then shipped on to you because I actually bred the fish here myself. So the fish are only shipped once and that's from me directly to you. If you're buying fish from like a large chain pet store, chances are it's been shipped multiple times before you actually pick the fish out and bring it home. I always like to do what I can to obtain any of my animals from reputable sources. One of the indicators that I use to judge a seller of fish is how well the fish are packaged when they're sent to me. If the fish are really carelessly packaged, it lets me know that the seller probably doesn't really care all that much about the welfare of the fish they're sending to me, and I don't like that. I don't really want to support that kind of thing, so I will avoid them in the future. Now on the other hand, if the fish are clearly packaged very meticulously, taking into account all the bumps and drops that they're going to have on the way to me, it tells me that the seller really cares a lot about the welfare of the fish and also acknowledges that these fish are one of a kind and very difficult to replace. I like that a lot better and when I notice that a seller packages their fish carefully, I'm a lot more likely to purchase from them again. I feel like it just tells me a lot about the integrity of the seller. The worst experience I've ever had having fish shipped to me was I had purchased four goldfish and they were all shipped together in a single shipping bag in a cardboard box with no styrofoam insert whatsoever. The styrofoam inserts are really important because they help provide additional rigidity to the box and also help insulate the box for temperature swings. There were, in this case, like a small handful of packing peanuts thrown into the box with the bag of fish but not nearly enough to provide any sort of shock absorption or insulation or anything like that. When I received the box it was actually a little crushed looking and wet on the corners and when I opened it I was pretty horrified to find that the fish were just put in a bag and into the box with no insulation or padding or anything and uh, the bag had leaked a little bit and so the few packing peanuts that were in there were all soggy and mushy. Surprisingly all the goldfish were alive upon arrival but they were extremely stressed looking. I think the only reason that they actually survived that experience was because they were the more hardy type of pond goldfish. They were like a slim bodied fish instead of the big round fancies that I usually get. However they were really stressed after arrival more so than usual and one of them died a few days later which I attribute to stress from that whole shipping ordeal. And I was upset because obviously I bought these fish because I was excited to have them and I cared about them and I thought they would be fun pets to have. And so I would have paid extra for better packaging and better shipping, I just wasn't given the option. On the other hand, I've had some really great experiences too and I would say that the vast majority of my fish shipping experiences have been wonderful and great and I would not hesitate to have fish shipped to you if you're worried about it. Just make sure you're buying from a reputable seller. The goldfish sellers that I buy from regularly are very, very careful in how they package their goldfish for shipping. And you have to remember that I'm not buying like a tetra that every tetra pretty much looks the same. I'm buying fancy goldfish and each one looks extremely different from the next and they're all very unique and one of a kind and pretty much impossible to replace exactly. It's actually in the seller's best interest to package them carefully then they won't have to go through the hassle of trying to find me a somewhat similar replacement if there is a problem. Not to mention, it's just the right thing to do. These are living creatures, so you need to take care of them properly. In my best fish shipping experiences, the fish are always double bagged in clear plastic bags that are just big enough for the fish to be able to turn around in comfortably, and then they're filled with just enough water to cover their dorsal fin and no more than that. That's usually about one third of the bag is full of water, 
and then two thirds of the bag is full of pure oxygen. Sometimes the water will even have like a greenish or a bluish tint to it, and that's usually from some kind of mild chemical that the seller will put in the water to help keep it safe for the fish and help keep the fish sedated during transit. If I've purchased multiple fish, each fish would be bagged in its own separate bag, unless it's pretty small and it's safe enough to put like two fish in the same bag. These shipping bags are propped upright in a cardboard box that is lined on all six sides with a styrofoam insert. Now the styrofoam really doesn't have to be that thick, it just has to be on all six sides. And that helps provide extra rigidity to the box and it also insulates against temperature swings and bumps and drops that the fish are going to experience during shipping. The box is usually then filled with like packing peanuts or something like that and then everything contained inside the box is wrapped up in a bigger plastic bag so that in case there are any leaks, everything will be contained within that bigger plastic bag and it won't get the box soggy because once the box gets soggy, even the fish in the bags that haven't leaked can start to get damaged because the box is gonna start losing its structural integrity if it gets wet. Of course, depending on what time of year it is that you're having these fish shipped and what kind of fish it is that you're purchasing, the seller may also choose to include either a heat pack or a cool pack. I usually don't have those included in my box of fish because goldfish are you know, fairly easy as far as temperature tolerance goes and also the box has that styrofoam insert that helps insulate it. And then on the other hand, some sellers, instead of using the traditional shipping bag method that I have already described, they will use what are called cordon breathing bags. These bags utilize a special technology that actually allows O2 oxygen to enter the bag and CO2 carbon dioxide to leave the bag. So as the fish respires, that carbon dioxide that it's expelling is leaving the bag through the, through the membrane of the bag itself and then oxygen is entering the bag. It's actually pretty cool. Fish that are shipped this way cannot be double bagged, so if you got fish this way and they're not double bagged, don't freak out, that's how they're supposed to be. They also cannot have any oxygen or air inside of the bag. It's just literally a little pod with filled completely with water and then the fish is inside of it, and that's, that's how it's done. I myself have never had fish shipped to me this way, but I have shipped fish out this way. It works best for smaller fish and for fish that don't have big pokey spines because if they have spines, they could puncture the bag. But for smaller or younger goldfish, it works perfectly. If you're shipping a type of fish that you can use breathing bags for, it actually helps cut down on the shipping costs quite a bit because you don't have to fill it with all that oxygen, so you can use a smaller box and it's a lot cheaper that way. With fish shipped this way, there should still, of course, be a styrofoam insert on all six sides of the box. However, the breathing bag membrane cannot be up against something, a surface like styrofoam, that will block that oxygen CO2 diffusion through the bag. So there's usually like some fluffy packaging material in between the bag itself and then the styrofoam insert. So there you have it. Fish are shipped around the world every day successfully and unfortunately if you don't know what you're doing sometimes unsuccessfully. It's not rocket science but there definitely is a right way and a wrong way to do it. Next time you purchase a fish take a look at the packaging and see if you can tell how much the seller cares about the fish that they sent to you. If care was obviously taken to make sure the fish were packaged well then you probably are dealing with somebody that deserves your repeat business. Well, I hope you guys learned something today. Thank you for joining me for another video, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And until next time, stay gold. I like to buy fish from reputable, reputable, reputable. I always like to try and buy fish from reputable, I did it again. I always like to buy fish from reputable, reputable, What's wrong with me? Reputable. Reputable. Reputable.